G'day everybody, welcome to another episode of Bushcraft and Camping Adventures. My name's Craig and today we're here to talk about clay. This is going to be the first in a series of videos that I do on clay. We're going to call them the Clay Chronicles. If you're like me, you remember using clay in primary school and making little little dinosaurs or, or little race cars out of it and putting it in the kiln at school and watching it come rock solid. But if you're watching this, then you're obviously a keen bushcraft and you want to learn more about how to get this working for you in the wild in a potential survival situation. Clays make great vessels out in the wild, but they also do many, many other things. So the purpose of this series is to introduce you to clay. What is it? How can you find it? How do you process it? How do you test for good quality clay? That's what we're going to cover in this series. So hold on tight, here we go. The point of this series is to give you a how-to, an overall view of clay from the very, very start of the process, identifying it, knowing what it is, through to the very end process, processing it, working it, firing it, what you can make with clay. So this will be your one-stop series on clay. If you want to know it, we're going to have it here. Mosquitoes, every time we do one of these videos. So what is clay? Put very simply, clay is basically very, very small particles of stone. That's it. But we're talking two micrometers in size. So that's very, very small. And these small particles are moldable. They're plastic, so to speak. You can craft them and you can fire them and you can turn them into things that you use for survival. We'll get to that later. Generally speaking, there is three types of clay. Earthenware, stoneware, and porcelain. So with clay, what you get is that water molecules become highly attracted to clay mineral surfaces and they basically interact over many years and they create uh, they create clay now accordingly because of this interaction between the clay mineral surfaces and the water you're going to find clay in most areas where you find water mostly you'll be looking at creeks and riverbeds streams etc etc where you've had water interacting with the earth and where there's been some kind of erosion taking place they're going to be your main sources of clay however you don't have to go bush to find clay either um, if you are got anywhere in your local area if there's a construction site, you'll see they will dig up the clay. There'll be big, huge chunks that the ex excavators will dig up the clay when they're building the foundation. And if you can get your hands on that, that's also a really good source of clay. It's very hard and it's normally a ready brown clay, but that's a really good um, urban source of clay as well. Clay can be wet or clay can be dry. Wet clay will appear very much like it is when you get it in its final form. It'll be, it'll hold its shape. It won't crumble. It'll be kind of plasticine in nature. Dry clay, on the other hand, is more like a hardened mud. Um, it will flake away and it will crumble, but when you add water to it, it will hold its shape. Um, and the way you can tell it's clay is the way it kind of scrapes away. It has a, has a Play-Doh-y, plastic kind of, look at the pictures here. You can see how the way it's coming away, it's not completely dry and crumbling. Now, iron will dictate the color of the clay you can have. You can have white, you can have brown, you can have yellow, you can have red, you can even have a blue clay, believe it or not, and they're all clays. So there's something to remember, there's mosquitoes all over me and it's making it very hard to make this video. So the way to test for clay, get a clump of the material you believe to be clay, roll it into a ball. Place that ball in your palm, roll it out into a thin snake log-like shape and bend it. Once you've done that, if it can hold its shape, you've got clay. It's as simple as that. If it's really good clay, you can wrap it around your finger and it'll also hold its shape. Use it, abuse it, go for your life. If it does break or not quite hold its shape, you may want to think about looking for a different source because really when working with clay, if you're working with bad material, you've got no chance from the start. Once you've found your clay, you want to store it in an airtight container in a plastic bag. Look, it's not vitally important because when you reconstitute it with water, anything that dried out uh, is going to be fixed up anyway when you add the water back anyway. But still, storing it in an airtight container is probably the most recommended way of storing it. So there you go, we've now covered the basics. What clay is, how to identify it in the wild, and how to check if you've got really good clay. Again, clay is basically very small particles of stone. You can identify it in the wild by its color, be it brown, yellow, cream, red, blue, can be easily identified. And we've covered how to test for quality clay. 
In the next video, we're going to start getting into how to process it. So we're going to be looking at temper and the actual process of getting that raw product that you've harvested yourself from the land and turning it into a workable clay that you can make vessels and all sorts of good stuff on. So thank you for watching. I hope so far you've learned something and I hope to take this series even further. We're going to be looking at everything from how to process it to how to mold it to how to fire it and the sort of things you can make with it that make it one of Bushcraft's great natural resources. So tune in with us then next time and we'll see you later.